the mass defect is the difference of mass between an atom's nucleus and the combined mass of its protons and neutrons. This difference in mass is its own matter being converted to energy, which is lost. This energy is called nuclear binding energy, which holds the nucleons together in an atom's nucleus. A nucleon is a proton and neutron of an atom found in its nucleus. So, when the atomic mass of an element is different than its combined mass of neutrons and protons, people were wondering why that was. In comes Einstein. His famous equation shows the relationship between matter and energy. So, let's take helium-4. This number is found by adding all the isotopes of helium, namely helium-3 and 4, because those two are the only stable atoms. Thus, atomic mass is a weighted average of the element, not the weight of the element. If we take the combined mass of protons and neutrons, we have two neutrons plus two protons, and we get this. So the mass defect of helium-4 ends up being this. Now if we solve for E, which is a few calculations to determine the energy of one atomic mass unit, we get 931 mega electron volts per atomic mass unit. So the binding energy is equal to delta M, or the difference between two values happens to be mass times c squared. So the mass defect times the energy of the atomic mass unit divided by the number of nucleons gives us our nuclear binding energy. My calculation is a little bit off because I didn't take into account the mass of electrons. The higher this number, the greater the force holding the atom together. The greatest mass defect is found in iron and as such is considered the most stable element. Now, how does this relate to mass effect? Element zero is defined as having atomic number zero, which implies it has zero protons. Hydrogen has only one proton and is the only known element to have zero neutrons. Its atomic number is one and its mass number is one. Mass number is the addition of protons and neutrons in a nucleon. So hydrogen's pretty special, but element zero has no protons. Now, if we speculate that element zero has just a neutron, well, that's also not possible. Free neutrons undergo beta decay, which lasts about 15 minutes. It will then convert into a proton and emit other particles, and if that proton gains an electron, becomes hydrogen, and it can start doing chemical reactions and bond with other elements. Interestingly enough, even though a neutron isn't considered an element, it is considered to have an atomic number zero and a mass number of one. So if you look at nuclear binding energy of hydrogen, it's equal to zero because there's no energy lost. There's nothing to bind to. So the existence of element zero is wrong because it can't have any nuclear binding energy, protons, or neutrons, and thus isn't matter. The idea isn't impossible as there are plenty of particles in the universe that aren't composed of atoms, have no atomic or mass number, are extremely rare, or constantly undergo atomic change. They would just be free particles existing with different properties. Let's look at what element zero does. When subjected to an electrical current, element zero releases dark energy, which can be manipulated into a mass effect field, raising or lowering the mass of all objects within that field. A positive current increases mass, and a negative current decreases it. At first, this sounds like some kind of electrolysis, but instead of instigating a chemical reaction, it does a nuclear one. The problem is that element zero releases dark energy. As far as science fiction goes, dark energy is all fair game. The problem is with its definition. They just call it dark energy. If we have a mysterious substance creating an undetectable or virtually unknown one, well, that doesn't make sense because we know it's right in front of us. We wouldn't call it dark energy. For example, we had no idea what a neutrino was. In particle physics, we collide two particles together, and like the mass defect, we have some missing mass and energy. This was a mystery, and thus was dark. We simply didn't know. We eventually discovered how to find neutrinos, and thus they were no longer dark. The terms dark matter and dark energy are just placeholders. They have no real physical value. So, if element zero was a particle discovered or found in dark matter, which happens to involve gravity, and then creates this dark energy called the mass effect, which increases or decreases the acceleration of gravity in the universe, or whatever it does, then this would be much more believable. We know there are loads of particles we don't quite understand, and an element zero particle, not an atom, would make much more sense would also make more sense if element zero was an actual element with protons and neutrons and highly unstable, but I'm making my description with two unknowns. After all, if fusion reactors exist, there's nothing stopping a writer from talking about creating element 118, an octium, or something beyond that, and speculation as to what is created. The idea that element zero has a physical form, can be refined, can be made into dust or whatever, is fundamentally false.
The only other problem in the description is with FTL, but that's an issue with all of science fiction. The interesting science comes from the use of creating mass effect fields, which are very similar to gravitational fields as explained in Einstein's general theory of relativity. As for its biological implications, the idea of element zero having mutagenic properties is actually good. Lots of radioactive material or particles have this effect. The concept that people can manipulate mass effect fields with their minds is also very interesting and not too far-fetched, since our bodies are comprised of neural networks, which are based on sodium and potassium ions. The idea that military biotics require a larger diet of 4,500 calories a day to keep up their electrolytes, as well as a number of energy drinks to increase their blood sugar levels, seems like a great basis for some interesting characters. But sadly, they haven't created any overweight telekinetic gourmands yet.